What's happening, filmmakers? It's George VK. Welcome to Filmmaker Secrets podcast, episode number 29. And I'm extremely excited to welcome my guest, Kelly Pantaleoni, who is an amazing actress, super talented. So Kelly, go ahead and say what's up to our filmmakers and reveal the one filmmaker secret that you've been keeping from us. G'day, everybody. So my one filmmaker secret is not so much of a secret because you all have it in your very own hands, probably right now, if you're listening to this, and it's this device. The Doesn't phone. matter what device you have. <laughs> it's your phone. That is the secret to unlocking complete creative freedom if you utilize this tool correctly. That's so beautifully simplistic, Kelly. Thank you so much. I think a lot of people get hung up on tool trapping, which is what I talk about all the time. You need that cinema camera. You need this light to, you know, to shoot the project. You don't. You have everything you need at your disposal. It's all about being resourceful, not about the resources that you have or you don't. That's amazing. Thank you for that little nugget. Um, so Take me way back before you knew you became, you wanted to become an actress, you wanted to tell stories as a filmmaker. What was that one little spark that got you the inspiration and this confirmation that, yes, I want to tell stories, I want to be a filmmaker, I want to be an actress? Tell me that story. I think it probably comes back to growing up on a farm in the outback of Australia, being very isolated and disconnected from society growing up on a farm an hour out of town no cell service or anything um and this was kind of like <laughs> it's not like i'm aging myself here but in australia we're a little bit behind in technology especially when you get into the outback so this was pretty much before the internet as well so the only connection i really had to the outside world was movies so i watched a lot of movies back on vhs and I, want, I thought I wanted to be a director because I love to create and have control over things. Um, but then I also wanted to be an FBI agent and a pilot and a vet and a horse racer. Like there were so many different things that I wanted wow. to be. Wow. Yeah, and then I realized, hey, I could do it all as an actress. So I guess it just came from that passion of, of watching movies and wanting to be in them and getting excited about the world, watching them and just wanting to be involved. Was there a particular film that inspired you that kind of had that launching point? There's a few. It's really hard for me to narrow it down, but the classics like Titanic, Forrest Gump, Moulin Rouge, which is actually celebrating its 20 year anniversary. Um, oh. So yeah, just, just really great films like that that got me really excited about life. That's amazing. So you're watching these VHS tapes, you're being kind and rewinding. So the next time you pop it into your VHS player, you can start from the beginning. Uh, as you're geeking out and learning about filmmaking and how to uh, compose shots and, and, and also getting in front of the camera and acting, um, what, what was sort of the uh, transition moment where you found a focus to where uh, you you knew kind of the kinds of stories that you want to tell. You knew sort of the roles that you wanted to fill on, on a film set, whether that be in front of the camera or behind. Talk to me about that sort of moment of transition from uh, just learning and, and gathering as much knowledge as you can towards actually creating your own stories and telling the stories that you want to tell. Yeah, I think that transition transition actually came sadly from trauma and a lot of loss and grief and my way of coping as an artist was to transmute that energy into creating something productive the silver lining out of uh, loss otherwise it was honestly just going to destroy me and I didn't want it to destroy me like mental health had destroyed another friend so I um decided to just make something in memory of losing my friend Lindsay Hawley and that's why I made a movie on mental health and I guess it comes from um having so many emotions and such deep emotions that um I think unresolved and ignored would have been incredibly destructive for me and I want to highly encourage people that are dealing with trauma and loss and grief to really use that energy as your fuel and your motivation to do something that can help change the world and help people that are suffering from that same issue that you are. Kelly, so that I, is really what. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I'm just excited because 
whenever I meet a person for the first time and they're able to be vulnerable with me, despite me asking the simplest questions, I really commend you for that. I think it takes a lot of courage. And that's amazing because us as artists and creators and filmmakers, we need to tap into those emotions because people don't buy you know, in the words of Simon Sinek, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Uh, mm -hmm. The audience might forget the title of your film, they may even forget your name, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Can you talk a little bit about that, the, the emotion that, you know, you're evoking as a storyteller? 100% is about how you feel. I can't tell you how many you know, quotes or words of wisdom I have bouncing around in my head that I have no idea where they came from, but it was the feeling that they left me with. And it's that feeling, that resonance, that kind of echo in my heart that keeps me going. And that's what I want to help other people with. It's, you know, the movies that I'm making, and they're vastly different because we can get into the, the second one that I made most recently, the comedy. It's not even necessarily about um what I'm saying like you said it's how I'm saying it and how I'm making people feel is the most important part so whether it's a movie on mental health or a comedy that just adds levity to a situation so people can laugh and feel good about themselves that's the feeling I'm trying to evoke is I think that we're a really numbed out society now and we could get into such a tangent about our food that we're consuming the stress that we're under um, the chemicals in our environment what we're doing to the environment. There's so many different aspects that are numbing us out and making us want to disconnect because it hurts too much or because we physically can't even feel it because of um, you know, a, a chemical imbalance or trauma that we've gone through that's unresolved. I think as we start to open up more as a society and start to wake up a little bit more, which I hope the pandemic did, we'll start to feel again. And through feeling, we'll care more about each other, protecting each other and the planet. So it's really important for me to kind of drive right through to the heart because I guess through things that I've been through, I'm a very open um, vessel, which is really quite painful for my personal life because I feel everything so deeply. But as a friend said, it's a superpower for my profession because then I can really tap into those feelings and emotions that I feel that can hopefully help people feel it for themselves. And, you know, whether it's a comedy that makes them feel good or a drama that just makes them feel seen um, and heard and gives them the tools to help them through that situation once they've identified it, I think that's the most important part seen and heard and understood right that's ultimately we all want to be accepted to to feel like we're part of a tribe it goes back to the most primitive you know prehistoric uh, uh kind of uh, lifestyles of, of people just wanting to be part of something that is greater than themselves but also something simple something like a uh, people coming together into a tribe and, and being understood and accepted in that tribe you mentioned something earlier on which which you know, my ears kind of perked up because it's something I talk about all the time is that storytellers have the, the, this power to change the world. And I always say that, you know, filmmakers have the power to evoke emotion, inspire thought, but most importantly, they have this innate power to drive universal change in the world. Do you think that's true? Do filmmakers have that power? Oh, without a doubt. Um, I think that as actors, artists, and storytellers, we hold this like barometer of how the world is coping. Um, singers, songwriters, musicians, the Beatles, like these huge powerhouses hold so much responsibility in helping communicate what's happening in society to something tangible and, um, you know, something that people can grasp onto and also feel, like you said, seen and heard. When you hear a song or watch a movie, that you can relate to it's like oh someone gets it and it's not just me i'm not alone so i think it's really important and i honestly think that a lot of artists have sorry there was a dog sneezing <laughs> Very I love cute it. Dog. <laughs> bless you bless you <laughs> uh, <laughs> many blessings to you well wow, she's going on a sneezing rant right now so it's, it's allergy season i think <laughs> it is lucky you're cute um so <laughs> So I think that we have such a huge responsibility as artists to 
um, communicate what's happening in the world because the news obviously does it in a very stressful, harmful way that is triggering all of our trauma responses. We need art to, to do the opposite almost, like to trigger the heart response of caring and wanting to create change and feeling passionate and seeing the silver lining. Uh, which the news does not do. So I think honestly, like art is the response to the trauma that we're seeing happening in the world because we can find a way to work through it and to see the silver lining in it. And I think that artists honestly have been dropping the ball on that. I think that, um, like I mentioned the Beatles and, and there's so many other artists, like I think the hip hop and rap artists of the nineties did an amazing job of using their lyrics as poetry to really inspire people and musicians these days are I feel just going for the money going for the you know catchy bops and the formulaic and even in movies we're often going for the formulaic route that we think will make money instead of the real creative you know story driven um, message oriented projects I think we really need to step up as artists to um, talk about what's happening in the world and to make a difference. I love the way your mind works, Kelly. I think that is, is just so, it's packed with knowledge. I, I really appreciate you saying that and sharing that with our filmmakers, because I think that in terms to, what am I trying to say? If, if a filmmaker is truly to listen to what you are saying right now, then they will not hesitate and tell the story that they feel is important. Uh, and that's something that I truly believe in. So as you know, we, we talked about the past, uh, you, you are now coming up into your own as a storyteller. And there's a project that you did during the pandemic, during all the lockdowns, and it's called 50 Shades of Quarantine. And I absolutely love the title. Can you talk to me about the inception of that project? Where did the idea come from? How did it come about? And how did it go? Yeah, it was, first of all, thank you. I'm glad that title um spoke to you oh, yeah. <laughs> it's because yeah I just I wanted to make something that um people could just laugh at and like I said add levity to a situation because you know we are going to look back at this time and we've seen it with all of the memes on the internet of how we're just kind of poking fun at it to get through it um and I think we will look back on it one day and be like how insane was that that we went through and I'm trying to find the funny parts of it because I think um, humor is such a great way to work through trauma. And obviously we've got to do our own therapy and real practical tools of getting through trauma as well. But humor is such a great way of being able to talk about it without breaking down over it. Um, and it came very organically. I was in lockdown with my father's family. My dad's American. So he lives in the Bay Area. So I went and spent a few months up there with them. And in that time, I know it's gonna sound strange, but I felt such a sigh of relief to have no pressure anymore. No meetings to go to, no auditions, uh, no events to get FOMO over not going to. You know, I just have, um, I'm a Capricorn, so I'm very much about my business and I wanna be hustling all the time. So to finally have all of that taken off my shoulders and to think I have no responsibilities, I have no pressure, there is no expectation of me, it actually freed me up so much just to get creative and do what I wanted to do. All these years, I've just wanted to create my own content, or at least I've known that's what I should be doing. And I felt so much, I think anxiety is um, energy that's not meant for us. And so when you have something within you that it's not being fulfilled, or you know, you should be doing something or you want to be doing something and you're not, and it's this energy of like, oh, this isn't right. It's not sticking. That is what I've had for so long. And to finally be able to say, okay, now I can do it. It was such a relief. And so I just put that time into um, using my improv skills from UCB. Um, I love Saturday Night Live. So I kind of wanted to do some skits like that. Growing up on the farm, like I said, watching movies. And I actually just had this like really weird imagination where I would, because I was an only child for quite a few years as well. So I would just like play with the dolls or play with the the fairies out in the bush, like just had this amazing imagination where I could put on these different personas, these different characters. And so I finally put that childhood experience and my improv experience and the things I love watching like Saturday Night Live and these different sketch comedy series that I grew up watching in Australia to use. And I just saw the characters that I was seeing in the pandemic, like 
the vloggers, the makeup chicks, the fitness chicks, the, the home chefs, and all of these characters are not to um, just mock them or make fun of them because they are truly myself. These are all facets of my personality. That's interesting. Just, yeah, that. it's like self, yeah, it's like self-deprecating humor. You know, I'm, I'm just finding different facets of myself, obviously amping it up and making it very entertaining and silly and having fun with it and going overboard. But these were characters I was seeing and being, I was the fit chick, I was the home chef. Um, but obviously adding elements in there because I don't drink, I'm two and a half years sober. But I had a friend that was doing these um, happy hour yoga workouts on Zoom where people were doing yoga and drinking. I was like, that is so funny to me. So I asked her permission if she didn't mind me using that idea and she was totally cool with it. And that's the thing, it's like, just finding these funny moments in life, not taking ourselves too seriously. So I just had a lot of fun with it. And I just, like I said, I used my phone. This was the t the only tool I needed. It was all I had. And I didn't, honestly, I don't even think I used a tripod. I was just propping this up. Like you'll see in the hippie chick, I was propping this up on sticks and and logs. I mean, I just I just made it work. And it was really Being fun. resourceful, that, that's what you were doing. Um, you know, I host a weekly show Saturday, every 6 p.m. Pacific on Could Your Life Be a Movie? And there's people coming up and sharing stories of never shared with anyone in their life to producers, directors, writers, people who can actually do something with that. Um, so there's so many different avenues you can go down on Clubhouse and it can be incredibly powerful. Like you said, we're being able to connect and make things happen really, really quickly. It's like a conduit. It's this like super highway into making things happen, taking you where you want to go. And the connections that are happening are absolutely insane. I agree. Yeah, I've um, witnessed some amazing things happening on there. And it's definitely the unique format of Clubhouse, I think, allows for that kind of uh, um, spontaneity almost. It's, uh, I, I think it's fascinating. I mean, I'm not going to stop using it. I'm going to, you know, keep jumping on listening to, to your club and to all the other ones that I follow. Um, I would love to talk about what is coming up next for you. Like, what, what are you working on? Um, what's on your mind in terms of uh, future projects or current projects? What's happening, Kelly? Yeah, so I'm actually, I've been meaning to write. I have started writing, but I've been meaning to pick back up writing a novel that I had started a few years back. And it's based on losing that friend I mentioned earlier, Lindsay Hawley. Um, and then I actually went on this like soul searching journey through Southeast Asia where I actually followed in her footsteps, all the places that she went to, I found in her travel blog and I um, took over her nonprofit called Give Backpackers. So I, that was me carrying on her legacy. And through that, I went to volunteer in Cambodia where she had and met people there that she knew and went to the temples she had visited. And I had this beautiful experience through Cambodia. Cambodia, Myanmar, India, Nepal, um, and Singapore, and Thailand. And so I, I want to tell this story of loss, but also of the magic and beauty that can come out of it. When you lose someone, you can find yourself um, through that exploration and, and that the deep, dark depression I went into after it actually elevated me higher than I had ever been when I could work through it. So it's a spiritual tale it's a romantic tale it's a travel story it's really really fun it's kind of going to be like eat pray love too <laughs> so that's amazing i want to finish writing that and hopefully make that into a movie one day writing a novel or a book is, is something that's always been so intimidating to me and so i i respect you for that and, and i'm really enjoying just getting to know you there's so much depth to a person when you just start a conversation that's authentic and I think I'm learning more and more about that on Clubhouse. All right, Kelly, thank you so much for your time, your knowledge, and your insight. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for being on Filmmaker Secrets Podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'll see you on my show on Clubhouse.